Imagine an assembly line of human beings, or artificial human beings, being put together piece by piece. Imagine all the characteristic aspects, all the idiosyncrasies, whether it's a mask, earphones, or virtual reality. Also imagine some sort of artificial human being grown in a jar. Yet this artificial human being has extraordinary capabilities. Perhaps abilities that change its physical form with elongated skulls. And yet also the terror of our nightmares. A horrifying creature that you can never escape. These are all the aspects that we're going to be exploring today. We're also going to look at the most disturbing element, which is the concept of clones and total control from a central node. All of these various aspects represent the homunculus, supposedly a creature created by the process of alchemy in the distant past. The homunculus had tremendous capabilities, and we're going to look and examine as to how the homunculus could have threatened civilizations in the past and even brought about their downfall. We'll also look to answer what is a homunculus, and consider if homunculuses are still with us, or should I say homunculi, which is the plural form of homunculus. We're going to examine it through the show Robin of Sherwood, a TV series from 1984 to 1986, which was the quintessential version of the Robin Hood legend. It's considered such because it was the most imaginative version, because it amalgamated historical events with myth, fantasy, and legend. It even incorporated magic and processes of alchemy. It also incorporated every aspect of the Robin Hood legend, considering the two conflicting origin stories, as there were two different characters who portrayed Robin Hood, or took up the mantle of the hooded man in the series. By examining that series, we'll see a plot element that concerned the use of a homunculus to potentially bring about the downfall of the civilization depicted in Robin of Sherwood. So let's begin by exploring what a homunculus is. And it has been covered by other alternative research channels, such as Mind Unveiled, and they've done a great job on it. A homunculus is a representation of a small human being. Consider what you see in this image. Originally depicted as small statues made out of clay. And this is where you also see the depictions of what are considered golems. The term lends its name to the cortical homunculus, so it's still used in modern medical terminology. The fully grown homunculus was supposedly greatly skilled. What exactly was it greatly skilled at? Why would it be so beneficial? In art and can create giants, dwarves, and other marvels. So consider an artificial creature grown in a tube of some sort. Yet an artificial creature with tremendous capabilities once it was fully grown. Have we seen homunculi in the past? When we look at the biodiversity that we've seen in what we're told are fantasy images, we question what's their actual origin. Was this just the imagination of the individuals at the time? Supposedly a time when imaginations were suppressed. Yet the concept of a homunculus is also considered nightmare fuel, a terrifying small creature when initially birthed, and then growing into a fully grown being with tremendous powers and capabilities. It is something that, from our natural perspective, would seem very threatening. Yet, these creatures have always been with us in many shapes and forms. And, as has been pointed out on other alternative research channels, such as Mind Unveiled, there are many different incarnations of homunculi. And oftentimes, they are used either as some sort of pillar of society, or something that tears society down. I'll even take the example of Dune of the Axidal tanks, where they would grow Gola clones in the bodies of what used to be women that were converted into creatures that simply reproduced artificial creatures, or clones. So the concept of the homunculus exists everywhere. It's in our legend, it's in our science fiction, and it's still used in our medical terminology today. But why is it so enduring? We consider the fact that oftentimes we fear, naturally, the counterfeit human being. The concept of cloning has supposedly been with us for many decades, and it's even been possible, allegedly, to clone animals. So if it's possible to clone animals, why is it not possible to clone human beings? What threat could a homunculus really represent, though, to a civilization? What possibilities could such a creature, if it did once exist, and if it still exists, could it provide? Whether it's to forces of darkness or forces of control? Or could it even have a beneficial result? 
In the legend Dune, the concept of a homunculus or a modified human being was able to conduct space navigation. Now, whatever we believe in the terms of existence of space, we have to consider the fact that if a homunculus exists or homunculi have existed, they've provided tremendous benefits, and yet they also provide an amazing threat. We look at the example of the show Robin of Sherwood, 1984 to 1986, aired on the British Broadcasting Corporation. An incredible show that mixed historical events with fantasy, myth, and legend. And it considered the concept of Robin as the hooded man. Robin in this series was brought about by Hearn the Hunter, a mythological forest spirit that constantly harnessed the forces of light and darkness, and always said this. Hearn the Hunter existed during a time of great injustice, which was brought about by the existing government and the Norman conquest of Great Britain at that time. Hearn the Hunter would provide a special set of weapons, and a consideration for what he would call Hearn's son. The series was notable for its depictions of the Sheriff of Nottingham and Guy of Gisborne, who were characters who struggled in their society, and at the same time they were constantly willing to engage in acts of evil simply to serve their society, and yet it oftentimes were at odds with each other. It also concerned the aspect of magic and sorcery, and indeed the pilot episode is called Robin and the Sorcerer. The sorcerer here being Simon de Bellme, who is a satanic worshipper, and is the first major opponent that Robin of Sherwood, actually starts out Robin of Loxley, the first Robin Hood, encounters in his initial adventure. And he has to overcome the sorcery and magical capabilities that Simon de Bellamy has at his command. It's also stated in the story that Simon de Bellamy was on a crusade, and during the crusade he lost his faith in the righteous God and turn to satanic worship. There's a lot of interesting dialogue and the show doesn't come forth as good and evil. It's a lot of gray area aspects, including appearances by the Knights Templar, who are depicted as having beneficial pursuits, but then at the same time they seem to have been corrupted by a form of evil. It's an intriguing series and it even accurately depicts the evil that's found in the clergy or the bureaucracy of the church at the time, represented by the Sheriff of Nottingham's brother, Abbot Hugo, who delivers one of the most memorable lines, May the peace of God go with you, take no prisoners. It even depicts King Richard as someone who is not to be trusted and ultimately merely a warlord who is seeking to further his own power and his own aims, played wonderfully by John Rhys Davies and is quite memorable in the series. There is also other adversaries they encounter, such as the Hounds of Lucifer. The Hounds of Lucifer are a satanic cult looking to bring about the return of Lucifer, led by Morgwin of Razafar. In this story, Morgan manages to infiltrate and take over an abbey and poses as a nun, and their followers pose as actual members of the clergy. However, they reveal their true colors and they're simply trying to collect the swords of Wayland to bring about the return of Satan and nearly succeed. This is just one of the many examples of the unique plots in Robin of Sherwood. Towards the end of the series, or the second series, the original Robin, Robin of Loxley, dies in a final standoff against the forces of Nottingham and the Sheriff, when Prince John, who secedes King Richard, demands that the efforts of Robin Hood and the Band of Outlaws are stopped using any means necessary. He's succeeded by Robert of Huntington, played here by Jason Connery, who takes up the mantle of the hooded man, bestowed upon him by Hearn the Hunter. It's intriguing because Robert of Huntington comes from a noble family, and we see the two different origin stories for Robin Hood. Prince John, played wonderfully by Phil Davis, is an insane megalomaniac ruler, and is oftentimes shown with bouts of insanity and ruthlessness. Finally, the most terrifying enemy that Robin of Sherwood faces is Golnar. Golnar is a warlock and a sorcerer, and his machinations include many aspects of sorcery and alchemy. He's assisted by Grendel, and both of them originally served a noble called Owen of Clun that Robin Hood had to overcome to rescue Maid Marian from in the third series. They begin a revolution called the Time of the Wolf, where they're looking to overthrow civilization by using magic, and Guy of Gisborne even joins their little band, dressed up as wolves. They even try to recruit the sheriff, but he's not having it, and he resists their efforts to recruit them. It's quite a consideration when we look at how this civilization, which is shown to be corrupt, 
and the government is shown to be corrupt, still has its aspects to survive, and the fact that Golnar is looking to do anything to overthrow the civilization. They manage to capture Robin Hood and the band, and Golnar decides to utilize an incarnation of a homunculus, or a version of it, also called a golem. And his intention behind this, using the process of alchemy, is to create a creature that can actually approach Hearn the Hunter, the forest spirit, who is really the guide and benefactor of Robin of Sherwood, in order to kill or destroy Hearn the Hunter and bring about a time of apocalypse, or the time of the wolf. And in fact, this is the final two-part episode of the entire series. It's interesting because it depicts Golnar utilizing the processes of alchemy, and he manages to create a golem or a homunculus, a duplicate, a doppelganger of Robin of Sherwood, or Robert of Huntington, as his original name was. And the intention being is that this monster can bring about the time of the wolf, in which case it's an apocalyptic time and it will tear down the civilization. One thing the show has to be given credit for is the fact that uh, everything is depicted in a gray area. Oftentimes you find yourself cheering for the Sheriff of Nottingham and Guy of Gisburn, even though you know that they're evil characters. And we see the full effect of this homunculus or this golem that Golnar, the sorcerer, creates. And it's a terrifying monster with exceptional strength. And we think as to how it reminds us of what capabilities a homunculus could truly have. And why it could really threaten a civilization or society. Because if you think about what's depicted in the plot of this episode of Robin of Sherwood, we see that the homunculus or the golem or the doppelganger turns against its own master, killing Golnar. It has only one intention, which is to kill and destroy and bring about its own power. And it seems as though Golnar almost accepts this. And Golnar is played by the exceptional actor Richard O'Brien, who we saw in Dark City. Eventually, the homunculus, or Gollum, encounters Hearn the Hunter and very nearly kills the forest spirit in a beautiful scene of standing stones. And we see what the real intention behind it was. Fortunately, Robert of Huntington, or Robin of Sherwood, is able to encounter his doppelganger and defeat it in single combat using the powers of light and darkness. However, this plot may reflect things that we've seen in the past. The use of a homunculus in order to bring about the downfall of a civilization. It's something we don't often consider, and yet we have many examples of it in our legends, in our myth, and in science fiction. This was the last episode of Robin of Sherwood, and unfortunately they couldn't get the show produced anymore. And there were other incarnations of Robin Hood, although I think it's safe to say that Robin of Sherwood was the best incarnation. We look back at our depictions of a golden age of previous civilizations, and oftentimes people ridicule this because they are quick to believe that they are living in the greatest times. Even though constantly the media reminds us every day of all the terrors and horrifying dangers that we face, yet conversely people are willing to believe that they're living in the golden age. For those of us who tend to look a little deeper and ask more questions, it becomes more clear to us though that the true golden age must have been in the past. The reason being is that we can see the evidence for it, and while many of us are conditioned not to look at that evidence, we question how a previous civilization could have fallen. I believe that one of the depictions of how a previous civilization could have fallen was with the use of the golem or the homunculus in the past. Consider that there was some sort of dark power that was looking to overthrow previous civilizations, and We'll just go all the way back to the Second Era, one of the early civilizations in the Golden Age, as this channel posits on its grand theories. Consider the fact that you have incredible human beings that are able to work together, no one feeling any sort of concept of superiority over anyone else, people able to pursue their own individual goals while at the same time existing in balance with a society. And how would one go about undermining such a beautiful society that was able to achieve stunning things? And the simple answer for that would be, to create a homunculus, or homunculi, the plural form of homunculus. Fraudulent, fake, or artificial human beings who espouse human characteristics and are able to infiltrate the society and bring about its downfall by infiltrating the great pillars of the society, whether it was its government, its elements of culture, or in every element that you can think of. Government institutions, culture, art, entertainment even, everything 
was up for grabs and was attacked by the artificial human beings, or the homunculi. Now this might seem like a very extravagant theory, yet at the same time we have far too many mentions of homunculus or homunculi in our legends, and even in the actual accounts that we have that survive of alchemy. Now can we trust these accounts? Maybe. Maybe not. It's up to us to try to discern what exactly is fact and what's fiction. And it could well be that this is just simply a legend. Yet there are many subtle references to it and many different aspects of our current society and our entertainment. And as I often say, our current society does reflect the old world because from the old world, the elements of it still exist and you can see it everywhere. Therefore, the homunculus very likely existed in some fashion. And we still talk about it today. If you consider the prospect of cloning and what that could potentially offer and what it could also threaten. Consider the fact that the homunculus existed in the past and that it was used. It could have had a benign purpose, but like everything else with the use of evil intentions, its true design was to bring about the downfall of previous civilizations, to keep human beings in a state of misery. Considering what we looked at with the previous civilization, which on this channel we call Tartaria, or the Fourth Era, how it went through three distinct phases, its inception and rise, its ascendancy and its height, and its de decline and fall. And very likely we see the fact and we theorize the fact that this previous civilization was destroyed by infiltration of the society. And if you think about it, the use of a homunculus or homunculi in vast quantities could have been very threatening to a society. And I believe one of our best theories for how the previous civilization fell was through that infiltration. Now, could there have been a variance on how this truly happened, this initial physical battle that was won by the previous civilization, or Tartaria, and then the subsequent battle that was lost? It could have been that instead of a physical homunculus, perhaps there was some sort of spiritual homunculus, if you will. As you encounter many people who are very narrow-minded and don't seem to consider other possibilities. And it's as though they're simply following a program, a recursion loop. Almost as though human beings don't seem to be true human beings. They seem to be spiritually aloof and they have no internal strength. And they're happy to castigate other human beings who actually try to search themselves and actually try to improve themselves. Because they don't ever want to see a civilization that preceded ours again. They want to see something that's in total decline, and they want to see something that continues as a civilization that questions itself, that doubts itself, and we know full well that happened in the past. It must have, because we know the civilizations that preceded ours did fall. Now, the mainstream admits there were great civilizations before ours that fell, but they'll tell us that they were inherently corrupt civilizations, and that modern man, over the last 200 years, has achieved incredible things, and continues to achieve incredible things even though no one seems to concern themselves with the fact that we can't replicate the achievements of the past. Even if you believe in space, we can't seem to even go to the moon, although we're working on it very hard, supposedly. We look at the images, though, of destruction of the past, and whatever version of history you believe in, you can't deny the fact that civilization has always been keen on destroying itself. It always seems as though we're told that these are nationalistic ideals or these are conflicts for conflicting methods of politics or existence or economic systems or even the rights of human beings although it's quite fascinating when we consider the fact that it just depends who you are and then suddenly it becomes okay to violate the rights of human beings just so long as your intentions are good i believe the second that happens is when we see a repeat of what's happened in the past and oftentimes another theme that you'll see in both fiction and history is that what's happened in the past will happen in the future. Or as I like to say, history repeats itself. History does not have to repeat itself. If we're aware, and if we retain our own conscious awareness of what's happened in the past and what could happen in the future, we can achieve a better tomorrow. We can achieve the golden age again. Because if it weren't possible, then people wouldn't be wasting their time, and that's exactly what they'd be doing and what they are doing, to try to deter us from continuing these explorations in order to find and believe in a better tomorrow. It is possible to achieve the golden age again. It is possible to achieve the wonders that we had in the past, and even exceed them. And it all starts with simple belief. 
And a lot of times people are detracted from their belief. They don't believe that we can build wonderful edifices again. Or they'll simply accept the explanations that were given that, well, we don't have the money, we don't have the artisans, we simply don't have the capability. And enough of these absurd theories, as someone like Carl Sagan would tell us, in things such as homunculi or the homunculus. Yet those physical realities still exist. And the idea of those physical realities exist in our current society. And it's even still a medical term. And you'll be told it's a coincidence. Well, there's a lot of coincidences everywhere that you see. Yet when we look at the glories of the past, and many of these buildings still exist, the great state capitals, many of the great art deco buildings, and even the buildings that preceded them, and people will simply dismiss them, we look at what we have available to us now. And we can see that our current society is a demoralization society. A society that's not designed to encourage us, but one that's designed to bring us down. Don't fall victim to demoralization. Look within yourself. Believe in what you know is right. Don't be afraid to pursue the truth. And don't be afraid to pursue your dreams. Yes, people always try to stop you. But nobody can really stop you. All they have are words. And words are empty. When you look around, remember that there are still monuments to the past that exist. Visit them. They're all over. You can even go to a courthouse in your local county and you can see the beauty in it. Well, thank you for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe.